so uh, you know first question that i usually ask is that uh, back like 10 years 15 years back when you started when you were just graduating out of college uh, what was your thought process back then and uh, why you sure back then that you know you want to go into gaming uh, that gaming industry is something uh, that you will end up making your career in yeah i think just uh, i mean so, so for me, it's kind of even, <coughs> even kind of goes way back. Hmm. So I was pretty sure while I was in high school, uh, I started playing games like, like probably when I was around like in the fifth or something. Okay. Uh, and like, I was very sure that I was going to make games. I mean, at some point, I mean, I was like adamant that I'd make games. Mm -hmm. uh, even as early as like high school and I mean there, there was nobody around to kind of tell you how games are made but it was like a fascinating thing and uh, video game consoles were around handhelds were around and like the early um, we did not have Nintendos or something but we had like I had a knockoff 8-bit console called Dendi so it's a Russian knockoff uh, so had that uh, then like a, had a good bunch of friends who had a lot of consoles like the old Game Boy and uh, the Sega Mega Drive and a bunch of things. But essentially, like, it was just, we were sort of, a bunch of us were all playing games, a lot of games, yeah. uh, and early systems, and did get a chance to play on a bunch of uh, even older consoles, like like an Atari 2600 also. But, like, yeah, like, uh, so uh, the fascination for games kind of existed even, like, back then. Um, did try to do some weird figuring out at that point. Um, computers were hard to come by and like you had to kind of do stuff in school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the only thing that I tried to learn at that point was like QBasic. Uh, and I think we had like a Shams book for QBasic programming or something. I tried to figure stuff out at that point and did not understand anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so fast forward a couple of years later, I think uh, probably um my brother got a computer um for doing music so he was into music and he uh he got like a, like a like an intel pentium something okay. uh, and uh he was making music on like cakewalk pro audio and um i don't remember what like like sound fonts and a bunch of others like music production stuff like he had a midi keyboard and he was just working on music and at that point, I used to basically play a bunch of games. Uh, and so he, they, like, both my parents were not happy. <laughs> my brother was also like, yeah, that if you want to use the machine, do it, do something useful with it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up learning. This was early days of, I guess this was around, like, like, Macromedia Flash 3 kind of period. Dreamweaver 3, Flash 3 kind of a time period. Um, Flash was owned by Macromedia at that point. Uh, mm. The Adobe acquisition happened, I think, like four or five years later. Mm. Um, and so at that point, I think I learned a bunch of. Um, I went to a like a local internet cafe slash like some courses that happened there. Uh, so learned a bunch of HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And they had like Photoshop, not Photoshop, I guess. I don't remember what they had, but they had Flash and Dreamweaver as part of the course. So I picked up Flash. Like, I don't remember if Flash 3 had scripting in any meaningful sense, but I think there was like director and then like a bunch of stuff was around. But interestingly, the other thing that I picked up was my brother incidentally had like a Visual Basic book. So I ended up kind of reading that and assimilating it like VB5, VB6, yes, eventually. Uh, and essentially, eventually also kind of picked up a bunch of C and C++ along the way. So I think those were the sort of like, there was like a clarity. I mean, it was still early days of the, uh, I mean, this was like essentially somewhat in decent internet. And I think we had dial up at home also at that point by that time. Right. Uh, but, uh, but like there were no resources. I think like the, uh, I, I remember like we had to go to a like entry cafe to just browse around and find like, I remember, 
there was like there was this nihi uh, there's a i don't i don't i'm still sure that opengl tutorial still exists uh, and i think nihi and nehe and nexc was another one later i think uh, there was also a direct text page which the author which i found him later also much much later years later but like like it was like early days of there was no middleware there was some middleware uh, so essentially it was just mostly exploring like what is possible in vb vb6 and flash and uh, so just figuring stuff out uh, nobody to kind of necessarily tell you what games are and how they're made hmm. nobody to just basically tell you like hey like you know uh, they this is real time and like uh, stuff happens in a endless loop and so like a lot of interesting fascinating learnings early on and uh, one of the interesting things was also to have gone through like some levels of programming and uh, self taught essentially um, and kind of going do some initial like rudimentary graphics programming also was like very interesting because it all kind of like a lot of the later middleware and how things works like mm -hmm. kind of clicks into place once you kind of know how things work essentially mm -hmm. uh, and in and and in the in the base of stuff uh, which a lot of people miss out i guess these days because you are directly using middleware and you have no clue what's happening in the you know underneath uh, so yeah so i think there was i, I think i'm just taking up a lot of time answering this simple question <laughs> basically had a clear idea back then uh, and i think i stuck to my guns and um because there was nobody to kind of necessarily uh, guide you through like a career path mm -hmm. um i essentially did not necessarily want to do engineering because i didn't know what that where that path led uh nor did i um uh, did not want to do medicine because there was no games there uh, and uh, the only other alternative, I really thought that he, I really liked, enjoyed writing when I was even in high school. And I thought, uh, like my my parents are also writers, and um, uh, so it was like, oh, I thought maybe like English literature would be a thing. And I was like, he, oh, doing a degree like this might give me, you know, the creative freedom and kind of we have the ability to kind of um, do games on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, clearly, uh, the hustle spirit was always there <laughs> to just yeah. do stuff on the side, and uh, so that um, did not work out uh, because, like, there was lots to learn even in college. Like, I couldn't just just uh, mess around and not work, uh, and like, I think like college was also like very distracting. So, so uh, I guess uh, just basically spend a lot of time. Um, uh, doing English literature and then I think uh, but honed like the flash skills and programming a lot more um, uh, design was sort of like kind of uh, up in the air at that point I think uh, my focus was uh, not necessarily mechanics heavy it was more like a very narrative focus I think like a lot of people come into games thinking they want to make stories or they want to tell stories which is kind of great uh, I think like you do a full circle eventually uh, you want to kind of really do interesting stories so yeah so uh, always had that thing and i think i did not necessarily get a break in games really mm -hmm. i mean um i don't so i mean i i did odd jobs all through like so um i think even out of college i was just freelancing for a bit uh doing all sorts of random stuff doing a lot of flash things and uh, Visual Basic, .NET, Flash, uh, worked with a bunch of people who wanted to do games and kind of did a bunch of that uh, because uh, like I picked up a lot of graphic design skills and tools as well along the way, Flash, Photoshop, Corel Draw, Illustrator, all this kind of stuff. So interestingly, I fell into like this weird space of like user experience design and front end kind of things yeah. because you knew JavaScript. And so it's like those early days of like, javascript jquery mm -hmm. and all that were born and like those interesting stuff front end stuff like very dynamic front end things happening mm -hmm. uh, so it was like so so yeah so like so yeah I mean, I mean i think that's kind of the job trajectory kind of starts off into different different things got it so i have like a lot of questions in my head 
you you started with animation right uh, when you were also working for arena animation earlier yeah was it specifically design itself there as well yeah so hmm. after my undergrad i did english language and literature and yeah. and then eventually uh went to delhi i was i was i'm from kerala so i was in trivandrum at that point but i'm mm-hmm. coach in trivandrum at that point and then finished college uh went to delhi my brother was in delhi at that point i was trying to figure out what to do how to get into games i tried to join like a mac m a a c uh, and uh, to learn stuff and then that fell out uh, i didn't join uh so i was basically out of money at that point and just trying to figure out how to stay in delhi and so i did a bunch of freelance stuff there i was in delhi like twice uh so there is like a, a brief stint initially and then i go back again much later uh slightly more sure footed in a way uh so i think the 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 first stint that i did uh, uh interestingly i, I can you hear me 2007 when you were in uh, erin animation yeah yeah so 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 there was two 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 since actually so the first time i was in delhi i joined so because i had this eclectic kind of like resume where i knew a bunch of these graphic design tools and some scripting and programming and all though mm-hmm. so i ended up uh, so aptech had this weird program where um not weird <laughs> but they had this exchange program with uh, uh the ministry of external affairs where like uh, the there are these this that's a bunch of countries which we have a, a a connection with they basically sent in their government employees and people uh who are working and then they essentially did like a cultural exchange program like a tour of india agra delhi and stuff like that uh and also learned like these kind of soft like software and tech stuff so i basically taught them so and and this was mostly like on and off like it was like two months on and one month off kind of a thing um and then i did join an arena at that point uh, it's a different story but let's not get into that uh but then after that i eventually came back to kerala and i joined up uh, because i had this oh i had taught in this aptech and aptech and arena were essentially the same thing uh and there was a an arena was more more of this animation 3d focus folk right. uh and uh trivandrum where i lived in where my parents were living at that point uh, had a uh, an arena place and essentially i asked my boss in delhi saying that hey can you recommend me here uh, for a job and she did uh and then i ended up teaching there and there also i think i pretty much taught the same <laughs> kind of things but there were really interesting kids there and really interesting people i met up there who were teaching uh but it was mostly um flash html scripting photoshop and all this kind of i did not necessarily teach animation as such un- unless it is in flash and that was like mostly like tweening and uh like uh, m- most people really wanted to know how do you uh script stuff in flash this was like the hot thing at that point hmm. uh, yeah pretty much an action script 1.2 and 3 something i don't remember now got it so uh, you know later on uh, you have had good experience in user experience like ux design as well and then uh, <coughs> the time when you switched into proper game design i think that was more of uh, your stint at byju's uh, where you switched into proper game design or was it a little bit later or earlier than that So that's the interesting thing. So I've been making games on the side in huh. some capacities either of her friends or who like just freelancing and all that like throughout. So <laughs> even during the flash days we would like you know put games up on like flash game license and all that. Uh but most of the time it's like oh this ha- guy has a project and you're end up doing. So there was no uh there's no just I mean it was very difficult so I I did not like really get a formal job job uh sort of a on either building or coding or designing at that point mm-hmm. um and what was interesting I think we were also trying to figure out things um because there was no clear path and again it was just difficult to get the information as to how do you do stuff mm-hmm. uh they were all kind of 
uh, I think Newgrounds was around, uh, which was great inspiration for both animation and really nice games. The, the second stint I did in Delhi is when I met my co-founder in Hashtash later, uh, Kinshuk. Um, is when I kind of did like an early UX kind of a stint. So we were, which is also kind of interesting because that is also where our com- kind of community focused work also started. Uh, the company that I was working with at that point called OSS Cube had a lot of, uh, uh, they were an open source focused tech company. So they worked on open source stacks um, like Drupal and um, like essentially like platforms like that. And they would create these software or services and all that for people uh, and using open source uh, tools, which were available. So we would also kind of work with open source communities to kind of like build relationship with community folk who were really good at stuff. Mm-hmm. And we would run these open source camps mm-hmm. uh, and things like that. So at that point, community building was something that both Kinshuk and I were both interested in. And uh, we were like, hey, we can't find people who are you know into making games. So can we try to kind of build something? So those were like kind of the early days of what is today's like game dev.in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we called it Indie Game Dev India at that point. And we were just trying to figure stuff out. Uh, so at that point, it was mostly just front end and UX and kind of design stuff. Um, and then uh, I had a short spell at uh, NID uh, for about three years, uh, two years, and uh, which is where I did my master's. So it was like basically I was doing UX and UI. And uh, so it was interesting because we wanted to start up. And so Kinship, me, Sanchez, Mike, uh, uh, and like we were trying to figure out like, hey, how do you start up? How do you do games? And they were also fresh out of college and trying to figure stuff out. Um, and uh, this was 2011, I guess. And 2011, what was interesting was I kind of uh, wanted to get into NID, the master's program here uh, in Bangalore. And I was like very sure. I was like, I quit my job and I just left uh, my girlfriend now wife uh, was a uh, partner who uh, uh, was at, was in Bangalore at that point and so I basically just packed my bags and went to her house and basically said okay I'm I'm joining an ID uh, and then I did not get a letter from this <laughs> so it was like, oh. <laughs> like okay now what do I do no, so the, the classes had started clearly uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so then what well, interestingly we start up uh, parallelly but uh, I am in Bangalore. The rest of the guys are in Delhi. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out like how do we work remotely and stuff like that. And then interestingly, I do get a call from NID like a month after the classes and all started saying that, hey, do you are you still interested? So I guess somebody dropped off. Uh, who Somebody didn't join. And I was that extra guy uh, who got called in later, uh, which was interesting uh, because... Uh, I think NID was like an interesting place uh, with great people um, and like lots of made a lot of interesting friends also. Uh, and it also also like interestingly a lot of like you, you uh, like a lot of your uh, badly a lot of your kind of gut instincts were reaffirmed by the teachings and the books that you get to read and you're like oh this is what I thought and this is oh this is also written in the book so it must be true. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was fun. Uh, so I think so hashash continued through my NID stint. So it was really difficult to juggle like uh, studies uh, and full-time projects and so doing things. So, uh, and we tried to do as much as possible from, I did try to do as much as possible from Bangalore. Uh, We made a bunch of games. Uh, uh, So at that point we were bootstrapped. There was no, like, I think the, the only VC we talked to at that point which was like so long ago, as far as I remember, was Sequoia. Uh, but this was like 2012 or something or 2011 or 12, not sure. Uh, but I think it was just too early and we were just totally immature and we did not know anything. Um, so it did not, nothing happened essentially. Um, so yeah, so we made a bunch of games. Uh, uh, we made like, we made like a bunch of mobile games and but our focus was i think primarily on we want to do premium and we did not really like free to play at that point mm-hmm. uh i guess we still don't but hey it gives us money uh but we are still so we basically tried to do a bunch of games uh and 
because we were bootstrapped, we were essentially short for cash and we were like really struggling. And um, we tried to do services on the side. We worked with people like uh, 197, like Paytm, Reliance, bunch of people and like made games, white label games and all that um, for like, like, like websites, like, we, hey, you have a, a particular marketing event coming up. We want a game for this, uh, or stuff like that. So, and our premium stuff also, again, I think uh, did not necessarily know great much about how the market and the things worked at that point. So we were just trying stuff out and uh, didn't, most of them did not pan out uh, as well as we would have expected it to. And we were also like really new to like figuring stuff out. Like I think a lot of us were like really, uh, because coming from like the kind of games that we played on PC and not nearly necessarily like mobile focused, uh, suddenly getting into the market and then trying to figure out what works here was also like very difficult. So yeah, so I think that's like a, like a decade ago is when I left Hashdash and Jin kind of went back into UX because my child was on the way. Uh, we, I went to Redbus to do a bunch of UX stuff there, um, build a bunch of things um, with really nice people. So I was, my wife was actually working at Srishti. Uh, she was working in a school called Aditi and then eventually in Srishti, which was also associated with Aditi. Uh, she was doing creative writing. She was, you know, heading a course there and all that. And um, uh we i i was also talking to their director and kind of trying to figure out whether it makes sense to look at games at that point and this was back in 20 uh 2014 i guess uh i was like hey 2013 2014 i was talking about whether it would be great to set up a game focus course because nobody else was doing it uh and there will eventually be a market and you know uh there will be students eventually and there will be like i guess now it is that time that there are students uh, and people who are interested in games like five years later eight years later but uh so yeah so i so i joined Srishti back in february 2015 and then i left in february <laughs> so i left on feb 14th <laughs> or in 2020 so exactly like almost like five, exactly almost five years later i left i joined like on a february and i left in a february um so that was fun. That was interesting, uh, teaching a bunch of kids and uh, a lot of learning. But I did not get any time to do my own stuff, mostly because maybe I was not disciplined enough to figure stuff out on the side. Uh, and also teaching takes a lot of effort um, uh, because you think that you get a lot of time, downtime, because you, know, you have summer vacations or holidays in between and all that. But the prep for classes, especially if you take your work seriously, the prep is like insane um, because you can't look like an idiot in front of these students. Um, and you also need to be prepared for those really smart kids. Uh, and uh, you need to be the, the, <laughs> the, the bigger person, the, the best in the room also. Uh, and far, far beyond, even with your experience, you know, people might just like, uh, I, I get it from the arena and app tech experience because there are people like Kiki, uh, is sub menu made sub menu make like, what is this like this, this obscure menu option? What does it do? Uh, and I'm like, oh, it does this. So I was always prepared for all those kind of situations and, and teaching also, I mean, beyond just prepping, uh, it also takes a lot of energy to just kind of communicate and making sure that the, the other person kind of understands. Uh, and a lot of times it is essentially mentoring rather than specifically spoon feeding stuff or teaching things like a skill or something. Uh, skill building is kind of easier because it's, you know, mostly it's repetition and you do more work and then you learn those kind of skills. Like you want to learn programming, you know, make, make, make stuff, do stuff and you can learn. It's just like the more you do, the more you learn and the, you know, the better you get. Uh, same with the like drawing or animation. It's just a body of work that you have to kind of build. But like a lot of times the nuances, like especially in a, in a, when you're trying to teach people like how to be creative or how do you think differently and how do you kind of, kind of uh, like not necessarily think along the same ways that other people are doing stuff and, and why certain things matter uh, and you know, why you should care about the way you do work and how do you build your sort of uh, 
body of work and output you know as a practitioner like what does this mean what does art mean for you and so it's a it's a different kind of a journey and that takes a lot more effort uh than i thought it might so it did take like five years uh and i did not do much work but i did a bunch of interesting stuff as rishti we did a we did an indie games festival uh okay. called indie game shindig uh that was part of uh, you can go to indie shindig.com right now and check it out like you can see the kind of games that we had published we, we essentially showcase not publish uh so uh it was curated by shailesh prabhu uh, of yellow studios and uh Patmini Demure, who was teaching uh, digital humanities at Srishti at that point. And uh, I was also teaching games uh, and other things. Uh, so uh, the Indie Shindig was interesting because uh, it was like, a, it was it's kind of one of a one of a kind of a thing uh, which happened. Um, it happened in, in Kerala. We actually did the festival in Kerala. Uh, it would have been interesting to do one in Bangalore. Um, and the Shindig essentially had games at that point. We had Go to Goa, Super Hot, uh, uh, a bunch of interesting games, Asura, um, Shailesh's games. Like, like, so this was what was interesting uh, was that none of these games were released at that point. Uh, and like, like all these really, really nice cool indie devs basically sent their games to our festival. And then we got to like kind of showcase them uh and talk about them and we also did a bunch of talks um so yeah so i i mean sushi even if it was like kind of uh even if i did not produce games or work on games directly i did a bunch of game adjacent things mm -hmm. did a bunch of teaching on games build a bunch of courses then set up their undergrad and postgrad uh degree courses uh in games uh yeah, and like did a bunch of installation, which was interactive digital installations and things. So it was more very art heavy and uh, not necessarily commercial game kind of stuff. And I think the segue to kind of Baiju's happened mostly because I had friends there um, and <clears throat> I could not get a job actually for a, for a while. Like I interviewed with like places like Moonfrog and it's almost like 2019 to 2020, I was basically trying to figure out a job because I got really tired of teaching and I really wanted to get into games. And I think that is probably where this point of like you having not gone through like a, you know, like a, a traditional career trajectory where you, you know, finish something, went to a particular kind of a job mm. uh, and then kind of build this up. So, so it's sort of like, so like every time somebody like a recruiter or something asked me, it's like, hey, like uh, how many years of games experience do you have? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I've been building games since I was like, I don't know, 10 years old. So like, does that count? Like, I mean, like, for me, it counts. But like, it's kind of a stupid question because um, like if you, if you want to lowball me, sure. But like, you know, uh, it, it's like, hey like i have like 30 37 years of experience in making games i mean not necessarily 37 like it was like i was not like <laughs> making games when i was born but uh, the point is that it's a culmination of your experiences right yeah. it's not uh, and skills build over time right. uh, and i personally think as a designer uh, it's great to be uh, if you have other skill sets that you can lean into it's very good uh, if you have other talents that you can, you know, if you can make music, if you can sing, if you can write, uh, if you can draw, if you can code, uh, you know, any, anything, if you can sculpt, if you, you know, if you paint, if you, any other, any, everything else that kind of enriches your design sort of depth um, and the kind of things that you kind of build with care, it kind of, it adds on to it. Uh, so, so yeah, so it was really difficult time to find a job because, um, yeah, uh, and eventually I think uh, like uh, Baiju's worked out because I had friends there who kind of uh, vouched for my sort of like credibility and skills, mm -hmm. uh, thankfully. Uh, and these are people, some of them I had worked with before, some of them I knew personally, generally, you know, like talking. Uh, uh, so, uh, because of kind of having uh, someone saying that, hey, this person is good to go, 
Uh, I ended up working uh, on really interesting stuff at Byju's. Uh, uh, a couple of games. So we we worked on digital games essentially. So these were like, so Byju had bought a company in Palo Alto called Tangible Play, and uh, Tangible Play uh, ha- worked with a bunch of studios uh, across the world. Like there's one office in Chile. Uh, I think there was they they worked with Masala Games. I think in Ahmedabad, I think, uh, and uh, they also worked with the Byju's Bangalore Games Pod, which we were part of. Yeah. So the Games Pod was essentially like one more studio with really good artists and learning designers and uh, programmers and designers and stuff. So it was like a really nice place, uh, like small, like small money, like medium sized team, uh, like super really skilled folks. And uh, we built a, a bunch of games. Uh, I worked on a couple of them. Uh, the digital, na- digital nature of it was essentially that the the games that uh, you can go go and check out Osmo, uh, Tangible Play Play had this platform called Osmo, uh, mm-hmm. which essentially is like like an iPad piece of software which essentially uh, has a like a mirror on top which basically reads the what is in front of your iPad, um, and um, uh, and that is used as input. Okay. So you have these cards, or these pieces, and stuff like that. You can kind of place in front of your iPad, and your uh, the game reads it and, as input. And then you have creative ways of playing around with it. So we had like insane amounts of ideas and stuff. Uh, and uh, so uh, eventually, that also kind of I think after a point, uh, I was like, like the the work there uh, was. Um, getting narrower in scope, uh, and uh, like it was, it was, it was almost like I was kind of thinking about, oh, like you know, this is uh, like the 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 work here is kind of changing its form, and the people are changing, and uh, some of some of the, some of my friends had left at that point, like a year, year and a half later, and uh, what what was interesting was like, uh, like it was just a weekend. I, I randomly get a message from somebody from Play Simple and uh, they were like, he, oh, hey, like, um, you know, like, are you looking for like, you know, something it's interesting, like uh, you've done a lot of stuff like you want to talk about. So it was like, on a Friday, I get a call. On, on Monday, I get on an interview uh, with the design director, who, John Kelly uh, at uh, Play Simple and What's uh, also uh, mm-hmm. who's a director there, uh, and we get on a call on a Monday, and I think we spoke about for on Monday, and then on a Tuesday call, and then I think Wednesday, I think we had an offer rolled out, and it was like, hey, it was interesting, like that was very fast. So I was like, sure, like anyway, it's like I I kind of told them upfront that like the amount of free to play experience that I have is like minuscule compared to all the stuff that we did in Hashdash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had this huge gap in between and you know, all the stuff that I knew was like mostly rubbed off from all my friends who work in free to play and the cribbing that they do and the kind of stuff that they throw around. Uh, so, uh, so, <laughs> so they were like, hey, it's fine. Like you'll learn. And like, I mean, I, it, that was like, I had like a, I think mostly like I had a crash course in free to play that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like pretty simple. It's not really like rocket science or something. Mm. Uh, it's basically just <laughs> it's just numbers yeah. and like stuff so it's not really uh, insanely difficult to pick up and learn also mm. so uh, that's been great so uh, I think Play Simple has like really insane like in like really cool people and they're really serious about the kind of work that they do and uh, that has been like really uh, fascinating I mean I have I have questions about how to kind of like, hey, it'll be fun to run a play, free-to-play company in Griffin Bay. Uh, but at the same time, like the kind of work that happens, the kind of enthusiasm and the the rigor at which, you know, uh, people study data and how they use it and how they engage with conversations. And like, there are, there are people like me who are somewhat averse at the same time, still engaged and interested. Uh, and then, you know, it's, it's great to work with a PM, for instance, who is also like uh, very, design inclined at the same time like we are also inclined to data 
but maybe not as much but like so it's like there are a lot of these dynamics which happen in this place so it's it's really cool so yeah so that's uh that's like i don't know like uh a bunch of my <laughs> uh, stuff that i've done I I <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> So yeah, I mean, in the in the in the interim, there are other things like gamedev.in, uh, and uh, so we we started the BYOG, which is a game jam, and uh, uh, and then the global game jam. Uh, so like, there are a lot of community stuff I end up doing, and the IGDC uh, as well. So like a lot of the other stuff that I'm involved with, uh, non professionally, as like mostly a volunteer. So. I came to Bangalore and then basically met up with Joel and Rishi, uh, Rishi Khan Someji and Joel Johnson, and uh, who basically we started running the IGDA Bangalore chapter, which is still functional slash dysfunctional. Uh, um, and we 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 used to run a lot of meetups. Now, I mean, now it's all changed and different different people have come across. And um, I mean, it's great to see more and more people doing interesting things and more meetups happening and stuff like that. But we have basically, uh, yeah, so meetups and game jams and things like that also keep happening on the side and trying to get things a bit more organized uh, so that it's easy for us to kind of step away also. Uh, so that like, you know, there's a there's a bunch of new people, especially like uh, students who want to like organize and do stuff. So it's easy if there is like a structure to just give them and say, Ki, Oh no! It's it's you own this now. Like you can run this. It's like it's it's this is like the infrastructure, or this is like the <clears throat> sort of like like this is what you can do with it. This is what we have done with it. Yeah. It if you want to do stuff with it, like please continue, or it's fine. Uh, <laughs> so like yeah, so a lot of stuff on the side also. Yep. All right. Yeah. So uh, you know, the other day I was also talking to Druhen. Uh, the founder of uh, Godspeed Games. So he mentioned that, uh, you know, similarly, uh, because he was, he's also having like good more than a decade or two experience in the industry. And he was mentioning that, you know, back uh, more than a decade ago, when I think the first version of IGDC happened. So there was literally like 10 people who showed up, uh, 10 or 15, like single or double digit uh, people who were coming to IGDC. And uh, so the question was that, you know, uh, even you have been in the industry for a really long time and you, know, you have seen it transition. So back like a decade ago, when you were back then trying to do something in the gaming industry, uh, like how were you able to, you know, even convince people around you, the stakeholders in your life, like were your parents, uh, you know, okay that, you know, yeah, uh, do something in gaming or animation as well. Right, because that was also a non-traditional career. Some like ideally parents would have wanted uh, you know, their child to either be a doctor or be an engineer, uh, focused on computer science, you know, doing IIT and NITs, whatnot. So how difficult was it for you to convince your uh, parents and family members and people around you, you know, who had say in your life? I don't think it was that difficult. I think I was very invested in this mm. like i was so sure about what i wanted to do uh and i was so committed like i mean not to kind of hoot my horn or something but like the like look, look at if i look at look back now i mean mm. like the amount of the the sort of the effort i took to figure out stuff or to learn or to kind of get information and just figure stuff out i think like uh so there are a couple of things I suppose. Like one is that my parents are also my my brother is a like a, a sound director and a musician. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom is a poet and a writer. My dad is also a writer, and so I think it's also uh, everybody in the family is also kind of creatively inclined. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not necessarily too difficult for them to think of uh, an industry which is sort of like this. So I think. Um, I think initially they thought I might end up in film or something like uh, in whatever fashion, like to go to film school or something like that. And like the early interest in writing was also kind of something that I explored a bit. Uh, we were writing for film and stuff like that. Like there, was a, there were years when kind of 
you were writing scripts and like doing plays and stuff like so i mean so there's always like a, <laughs> a different like line of work i could have ended up in uh, but i was just i think adamant about like and kind of very focused uh, on the things that i really wanted to write i was really wanted to make games and i just wanted to make them I still do essentially essentially is, that is the only thing that keeps kind of me awake uh, at night and like keeps me going uh, in life is essentially just that there is just like immense need to do it and and uh, i think people did see that um so they were pretty convinced that i was serious about this. Uh, i was not joking about it as a i know that there was no particular career prospect and like job or um i i so so the initial i think i said that uh, i think when i was trying to join mac at that point i said animation is a way into games uh, mm-hmm. let me go and learn animation mm-hmm. uh because i, did, I was not an engineer uh and i think that trajectory had close that i could go into programming i mean especially even even when i could code pretty well uh it was uh because it was not like a like oh then the, the problem was ki how do i then approach a programming job for that matter all i could show was my kind of flash stuff and uh it was really difficult there was no way i didn't know like essentially there was nobody to tell you what the trajectory is or how do you approach a problem uh so there's no clear path as to kind of how do you get into this space uh so uh i think uh partially it was i guess that uh they mostly just trusted me to kind of do what's best and figure stuff out and i basically just figured stuff out in some form and yeah, yeah it's just like random stuff <laughs> just you know just just comparing it to uh, today's time like it's it's very easy for uh, you know gen z and gen alpha folks to understand what a trajectory would look like because all yeah. we have to do is you know just look for an ideal profile on linkedin and uh, you can you can simply go through people's trajectory like what got them to maybe buy jews or what got them to a company like you know triple a gaming company like rockstar or something else yeah even 5 4 years ago also i think it's much much was probably easier but it does take a lot of hard work like i have friends who really wanted to get into like naughty dog or something mm. uh students i knew about i mean like and it's it's hard it's not easy to kind of play at that level and to kind of break into those spaces if you have no idea uh of the amount of work that you may have to do. and and so like being in india is like there's no triple a specific industry here as such right so like it's great to have kind of idea i like ideas about going into a triple a kind of a game space but like it's much harder for you out of india from india uh, even now i suppose to an extent like if you are studying here and doing work here or if you're trying to figure stuff out the kind of trajectory out into a triple a space is probably much harder i mean i would say like probably better to kind of talk to people uh, who have gone that route and yeah. figured that out but most of the time i have a feeling that involves education abroad at some point uh, which opens up a gate somewhere uh, i mean i remember looking at uh, guild hall at smu uh, full sail um, so many colleges i remember like just looking at their catalogs i have emailed them i have given them my address they have sent me documents uh so many spaces but it was just like either new, i mean for me i kind of shut myself i i did not have a technical degree so to get a programming like a masters or a like a degree i had so it was difficult to do at that point right. uh and for like an art animation you needed to have a portfolio so nobody told you what a portfolio was and it was it's a different time so i mean so it was like a it was a bit different and difficult to kind of break into these spaces i think it's much easier now to just get information and build stuff um uh, i mean even for nid it was like like you did not know like what the process was or what you needed to prepare for uh until you kind of go and ask someone or go to like an institute or something correct um uh, so you know, one last question that i've had in my head is that uh like this is generally for even you are uh, building a community for game makers right now 
uh, and uh, you know we have been trying to do the same for a couple of years now so if you if you had a message for someone who is right now trying to break into the gaming industry uh, like what would that be i would say pick a piece of software that can make games and make games and finish them and release them in some form like if you are especially if you are learning and if you have the time if you're in college you have the time i mean like if especially if you're in college you do have the time just you know like i would say not to like you just count your weeks and you can basically the cut out the weeks that you're spending time with other people uh and cut out the times that you're watching stuff on youtube and netflix and of course i'm saying not not to study but i'm saying like or not to socialize or do stuff but i'm saying ki carve out a routine and like if you really want to get into games make games it's not difficult at this point there is so much information out there uh there is so much like technical tutorials and uh you know I, i think the problem right now is probably like curation and mentorship uh because like there is so much stuff out there that i would like someone to basically just tell me what to do or tell something like you know hey like like don't get paralyzed by like you know this like this like plethora of this the like, huge chunk of information out there like like pick a platform pick a tool i mean even i boil it down to saying that ki just just pick anything like pick unity pick game maker pick godo pick pc make a game or do a jam actually like probably easier to do find people to work with and then release the game out to people so that people play i would even go as far as to say to publish games on stores like put it out on the play store it is cheap to put something out on the play store it is cheap to it's zero cost to put something on the on hio uh, it is slightly cost i mean you have to pay something to put something on steam but the experience that you get from releasing a game and people commenting on it giving you feedback uh, i mean ideally you should do that in the process but like he, from people who actually paid money for it uh, is a very different experience and and the kind of uh the so it's it's yeah it's essentially that like finish finish your game and then put it out uh yeah, sorry i didn't get that yeah yeah I Yeah, 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 I can okay. divide it into four steps. Like, just pick a software or a tool stack, uh, start learning it, and then start building games into it, and just ship it out. So, like, building in public. Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Uh, cool. I think as well. Uh, I've asked majority of questions that I wanted to ask. Uh, good enough to, uh, give us like you know, give us a good context about your journey as well. And, sure. Uh, Okay yeah cool thanks bye bye all right